So as you guys know, I, I've, I've read like almost all of the Mass Effect books except for the one with Korra um, and the one I have not read the comics either. And I'm actually thinking of getting the comics as a compilation of all the comics. I'm thinking of getting that as well. Uh, just to kind of get more story, more background on some of the characters and everything. And also, you know, like the books are great because, you know, while you're playing the games, you get a good idea of everything that's kind of in your like your field of view, like everything that's in your your scope. So like you have everything that's happening then or whatever history pieces you could pick up. Like, for example, when you're playing Andromeda, you meet the Angarn that will that will uh, give you uh, you get a lot of, kind of insight into their into their history and everything. Uh, so you learn a lot that way. But the books, I mean, and people say the books are better. Like in this case, if you want more lore that's kind of delivered in a more linear fashion in terms of taking a story and really breaking it down and, and you get a good sense of like what really happened, like a Nexus Rising, you get a really, really good sense of of what happened prior to Andromeda. Uh, and if you haven't played Andromeda, which is which is fine, I understand. It came out, it was, it was shit. But now it's actually, I mean, I feel like they've cleaned it up. It's a pretty fucking solid game. Um... But I would say before you play it, definitely read Nexus Rising. It drags a little bit in the middle. It definitely drags a little bit in the middle. Uh, but it does pick up towards the end. And it's totally worth it because but you come out of that book with the with with clear a clear sight as to what who is who who has a history of doing what what really happened between different factions. Um, uh, in between, well, how these different factions got created, you know, why, why are the Krogan like no longer on the ship? Why is Kesh like on the ship, but none of the other Krogans? Like, what happened there? You know, there's, there's so much that happened in the in Nexus Rising that really paints a vivid picture of what happened um, prior to Mass Effect Andromeda, and I, I, I think that's like essential reading uh, if you, if you plan on playing the game, and like really, do, I don't mean like beelining it right to the end of Mass Effect and Andromeda. I mean like if you plan on getting in and like really exploring the the peripheral stories and the side missions and really getting to know all the characters and all that stuff. That's that's you. If you're that person, then you also need to read Nexus Rising for sure. Um, you see info on the vague uprising in uh, the vague uprising. You see, books but there are a lot of words. Yes, there are a lot. Uh. But yeah, so I have read, uh, yeah, Initiation is the one with Korra, I believe, Korra Harper. Um, uh, right? Yeah, Korra Harper. Uh, and then, let's see, Mass Effect, da, 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 da. Let's see, there's two more, is Mass Effect, uh, no, actually, yeah, so there's only one more book, that's the only book for Andromeda that I haven't read. There's one book in the previous trilogy that I've not read, um, can't remember the name of it, but it had like, got like really, really bad reviews. So I kind of don't want to read it, but I feel like I kind of have to now because, you know, I'm about done. Just like Cora Harper's origin story. I'll read that one as well. Um, I have finished read some manuals. I know she, she, Cora was just not the most interesting character, but then again, like I've kind of races against humans when I play Mass Effect. So I don't really care about their background story or anything like that. Um, and because typically they're just not terribly interesting. Like, I mean, uh, yeah, you're a human. Yeah. You had human upbringings. It's just... It's, <laughs> it's like oh, whatever like you talk to a krogan it's like dude you live for two centuries please tell me your your life story or angarin a completely new uh civilization completely new race and there's so much like the angarin actually a really deep culture and now it's just gone unless they plan on integrating into mass effect 4 but you know who knows with that um so anyways annihilation focuses entirely on the quarian arc so if you're not familiar with the arcs uh the arcs are uh, it's kind of like Moses' Ark. Uh, you, they basically slap a whole bunch, like twenty thousand pods, onto this ship, and then they just sent it in one direction towards Andromeda. Um, yeah, this this ship is called the Kilasia, um, and uh, in this, in every ship, there is a majority of a specific race, right? So this is the human arc. There's the um, there's the Quarian arc. I'm sorry, the the the, the um, Turian arc. There's it's basically an arc for all of them except for the Quarians. The Quarians have the um, obviously Quarian. It's like sixteen thousand Quarian or something. Uh, like probably five hundred or a thousand Drell. Drell are like the the lizard type people, like skinny lizard type people. Um, there's the Hanar are on there, the Elcor are on there, and the Volus are on there. So just a reminder, the Hanar are the floating jellyfish type. The uh, Elcor are kind of the slow, with 
with much appreciation, da, 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 like that kind of Eeyore sounding. Uh, the um, the Volus are the uh, the short, you know, I am a biotic god guy from the first trilogy. The short, um, kind of stumpy, badger-looking characters that are also wearing an environmental suit. Um, the, the Volus are pretty interesting in that they are the only... Um, they are the only race in council space uh, that have a specific, they're, they're ammonia based. So like, it's not like the Quarians, the Quarians, the reason why they wear suits is because uh, their home planet of, uh, I think it's uh, Rainock or R Rannoch, I can't remember, uh, but their home planet was overrun by the Geth and they, you know, they ended up living on the the, cor the migrant fleet for so long, uh, Rannoch, uh, they li living on the Quarian fleet for so long. Uh, that they've basically developed a like a zero immunity to like zero immune system, so um, they can't like they can't be exposed to anybody for any period of time. Which is why like when you when you date uh, Tali Zora from um, uh, from the Mass Effect trilogy, and it's a big deal when she takes off her mask because you know because their immune systems are just non-existent. Uh, so the Volus they wear they wear uh, their own uh, Enviro suits. Uh, specifically because they need a completely different atmosphere. <laughs> they they just simply can't breathe. They breathe ammonia or some shit. So yeah, they can't even. Um, they yeah they, they they just have to wear these uh, fucking suits all the time. Um, their suits are also not entirely uh, that similar from Quarian suits because Quarian suits have all these like built-in defense mechanisms where they can. Um, uh, like if there's some kind of uh, a virus or some kind of bacteria or whatever, it'll treat the, the the persons inside the suit. So it's it the suit takes care of them. They actually have a song that they sing, "My Suit and Me," um, because they they basically grow up and they live and they wear even on the on the migrant fleet they wear their suits all the time. Like they just never take it off. Um, so again, another big deal with when when Tali Zora takes off her mask in front of uh, you know Shepard. That's again another big deal because they only do that in like the most intimate of situations, even on the migrant fleet. Now, um, Corians in general are very uh, like scrappy in terms of like they uh, uh, they they're they're not like you think like uh, Turians or um, or any basically any other council council race where like they have refined armor and all this stuff. Like Corians are pretty much the scavengers. Um, where they will like all their ships in the in the migrant fleet are all composed of different ships that they've you know acquired or that they've gotten that are like you know from you know space junkyards or whatever they've repurposed, so they are constantly, um, they are constantly uh, uh, breaking down and all this stuff. And the same goes for their suits. Okay, and I'm telling you all, I'm giving you all this background here because this plays into the story a little bit. Um, now another core culture mechanic of the uh, of the Quarians is they love the migrant fleet. Uh, whenever they um, whenever they come to a certain age, they go on their own private, like their own personal, like expedition. Uh, think about like a, like a Mormons or something, or like a, um, uh, I can't remember, but just just basically they go out and Amish. A pilgrimage, yeah, it's a pilgrimage. So they, where they basically have like you know they have to go out and do stuff, but instead of just being welcomed back into the migrant fleet, they um they have to bring back something of value to the migrant fleet and present it to your ship's captain. Uh, so obviously the fleet's composed of like ten thousand ships and everything with like a like four I think four different like uh, farm ships or whatever. So you have to present your your whatever you have to your captain and they have to accept it in order for you to be accepted accepted back into the ship. So you know, people, uh, Quarians in general want to be a part of their, they want to go back to the ship. They want to be part of the ship uh, and be part of that ship culture. It's what they know. It's what they love. And so they want, they go out on their pilgrimage and they do whatever, and then they bring it back and everything. And then they try to get, you know, to, um, to be accepted back into the ship. Um, the ones that don't want to stay in the ship uh, or part of the fleet are typically unsavory. Not not entirely unsavory, but just in general, 
right? Most Quarians that we've run across that don't want to stay on the migrant fleet, that want to just go out and make, you know, whatever, either they've been expelled, like, like actually exiled from their fleets, uh, or they've been, uh, or, or they, they basically found a new life and they want to just live it, whatever. And typically it's, it's relatively unsavory. Um, uh, and so when it comes to the Ark, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, oh, the Batarians, by the way, are also on the uh, the, the Quarian Ark. So it's a, it's, it's a hodgepodge of like every other race, the other uh, Ark, as somebody said earlier. Um, so the uh, so so now just imagine now you have this Ark and it's composed of just like, you know, every single other race uh, in Council Space or from Council Space. Um, and the majority of your Quarians are probably going to be, you know, like outcasts or, you know, people that don't necessarily want to go back to the fleet for whatever reason, which in general, that would make them kind of an outcast anyways, because why wouldn't you want to come back to the fleet? Um, and then, of course, you have all the other races and then the Batarians, which are typically, you know, smuggler types. Uh, they they don't really have like a arts, like an arts culture or anything like that. They primarily focus on uh, uh, on just smuggling, trading, intimidation, stuff like that. They're just more aggressive uh, uh, species or race. Um, and so, you know, this is who you have on this on this ship. <clears throat> so the way it works is your ship is just hauling um hauling across space and then every handful of years it's 650 years uh that it takes to make this trip so every like 100 years or 130 years something like that uh a team wakes up and that team has to uh do you know just kind of general maintenance checks and all this stuff right um and that's it just like general maintenance and just kind of check on things make sure everything's running good do check-ins whatever and then you know some and then they go back to bed. Um, now, historically, cryogen pods have like well, water the plants totally have no no failures. Like it has a history of basically never failing. Okay, so the book starts with um, like the first lieutenant or something like that being woken up out of his pod, and he asks the VI, he's like, he's like, why are you waking me up? And he says, there's a problem. The cryopods say that there's no um, that there's no problems with anybody on the ship, but we're not reading life signs from like for like sorry from like uh, sixteen drill or something. Oh, how many? What is? Let me see. I'm pulled the number here. It's like a lot. Like it's not six. It's like, it's like four Hanar and then like a bunch of drill. It's mostly the drill that are being um, that are just dead, but they're. Like, but their pods, when you look at their pods, it still says it's fine. The system says it's fine. So it's like some kind of bug or a glitch or something. And so <clears throat> let me scroll down to the actual, there's like notes on here, actually. So I'm, I'm kind of not cheating, but just so I can look up some of the numbers. Uh, let me see. Uh, Annihilation. Just so I get it. Let me see. Yeah. 461 Drell and two Hanar. There you go. They had to do visual confirmation that they were dead. So, <clears throat> uh, once once the uh sleep yeah three members of sleepwalker team blue that's what it was so once they once those guys got out uh they started to wake up a couple other people just to kind of get a team together so they could figure out what the fuck is going on um and they discover that's when they went through they did visual inspection and they discovered that it was 461 drill so it was a lot of drill um that were dead and no you know no no one else but there was the handful of um, uh, of Hanar, and so um, the more that they go and they, they the more that they go and explore whatever, the more they discover that there's like more dead and all this stuff. Uh, so so just so you know, like some of my 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 immediate recollection of of, of some of the events might be a little cloudy here. So, um, but I'm trying to try to piece it together for you guys because it was a really interesting story. Uh, so they um, they have Yorick who is a huge Hamlet fan. If you remember from the Mass Effect trilogy, there was a couple ads for the all you all Elcor version of Hamlet that they were like a play that you could go see, but you couldn't actually see it, but it was advertised in uh, the Citadel. Um, so Yorick doesn't have any direct ties to that, but just to keep playing on the whole, you know, Elcor sometimes have a fascination with whatever uh, Elcor, this particular Elcor does have a fascination with um, extreme fascination with uh, uh, with uh, Hamlet and so much so far as he calls himself um, uh, Yorick his sole name is Yorick anyway so um, 
York is a doctor, and that's why they woke him up because he's part of this team. And you know, every team has a doctor, and so they uh, they pull him out and they say, "Yeah, we need a doctor." Um, well, there's something going on. We don't know what we think it might be some kind of bacteria or a virus or something, but he's like, well, I mean the cryogen pods, when you go in cryogen, you die. Like it freezes you to the point to where you're dead. So there's no, like, there's no bodily functions or anything happening that would allow a virus or a bacteria to grow or to do anything. It would just like, you're dead. And then you wake up, um, when you get to the other side. So there's, there's no way it could be a virus. It can't be a bacteria. It can't be any of this stuff. Um, and so, you know, they, so they're like, well, can you, can you like, you know, help us figure it out, whatever. And he's like, he's like, I'm a, I, I, I handle the sniffles. Like this poor Elcor is like, I, I'm a, you know, like you come to me if you have the sniffles, like, <laughs> so they, they had to like dig through people's things or whatever in order to find some kind of equipment that he could use. Cause the ship, and this is like a huge fuck up in terms of planning. The ship has nothing to help them, it has very few actual food rations or anything like that. Uh, it has very few actual supplies, like in terms of equipment and stuff that you could use to do any kind of like processing or, or anything. Cause they just, they just said, you know what? The Nexus will have all that stuff. That's it. The Nexus will have all that stuff. So we don't necessarily need to to worry about um, about having you know all this equipment because when we get there, the Nexus will take care of us. <laughs> so they had to dig through all of this, all these bags and luggage and compartments and all that stuff, and they eventually came across so they, some something directed them to um, uh, I guess some specific bag that had a it was a Krogan's toy, like a little child Krogan's toy microscope. <laughs> And so he had to use a toy microscope to basically go through and do like analysis and all this stuff. Um, so then they come across this Batarian who, and this part I'm a little fuzzy on because I can't remember how he's awake or why he's awake. Maybe he's a part of a previous team or something like that. I can't remember what, um, but they came across this, um, this Krogan or this uh, Batarian who was clearly ill with something. And the Drell, who was a biotic, basically locked him up, like picked him up and you know, like biotic pushed his ass into an ISO chamber chamber. Um, because they were like, this guy's got whatever this shit is. But it's a Batarian. And typically viruses don't jump. They don't jump species. So there's something wrong here. Meanwhile, like all of the... All of the... Uh, uh, systems are just still not registering that anything's wrong. So it's like, now we have three different races that have been impacted by this. Um, or three different species have been impacted by this, by a virus or something that's apparently jumping. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, sensors. And, and so, so it's like two two different layers of thing that's going on and, and that is causing the, this massive confusion. Um, so the uh, the Elcor, of course, being the doctor, was the one that was assigned to uh, to basically look over this guy. Um, and uh, he knew he, by this time he knew that this guy was going to die like he he'd already projected or something. So he knew this guy was going to die. And so and the Batarian and it's it's tragic like this Batarian is like, you know, going through all the stages of this virus Um and just trying to like you know trying to reconcile with the fact that he's you know maybe gonna die just telling stories to the elcor and all this stuff and this elcor is just sitting there just like fucking taking notes uh there's a hanar with him too but the hanar like was sleeping or some shit uh for like most of the book for fuck's sake <laughs> but uh i mean the hanar and the elcor were like hanging out for a bit but then the elk then the Han elcor like took the shift and you know basically watched over the batarian and the hanar just took a nap or some shit um so the Elcor um, was able to do some tests and he was able to discover what the R naught number is. So given that we have coronavirus right now, most people know what an R naught number is. Basically, it's a retransmission rate. So if if the R naught number is zero or one, that means that if you catch a virus, you're more likely to, you're, you're likely in ideal circumstances to pass it off to somebody else to at least one other person. If it's a two, then two other people. The um, they said that they said measles had an R not number of like eight or something. So if you get it, you get like eight people are gonna get sick in ideal situations. Um, the R not number for the virus because they discovered it's like okay, it is a virus of some sort, but it doesn't make sense because it's jumping species. Um, but whatever it is has an R not number of twenty seven, like twenty five to twenty seven or something crazy like that. So they were like, yeah, basically like one person gets it, everybody gets it. So meanwhile, the um, 
so the cap yeah the captain's awake and the captain female captain corian captain the captain she uh she's you know just kind of trying to direct people and whatever and there's a bunch of other people awake and this part i'm a little fuzzy on but it doesn't matter because we'll, we'll skip it but just just know that there's a bunch of other people that are awake um from all different species and they are they are affected by this and they are in the like the later stages of it um by the end of the book they're like in the later stages of it or there's some of them are getting there the stages are basically you start off you're like kind of giggly and whatever you, you you have like temperature fluctuations issues so you're like hot cold flashes um you get um your your um your tear ducts start to kind of like ooze out like kind of like like pink eye kind of then you're then you start to get like these pustules that'll start to grow and all this then you obviously you're in a lot of pain because these pustules are all over your body uh your your mood you you go through like all these crazy moods and eventually you end up because your brains because there's like an encephalitis type effect so your brain starts to swell and so you start to go basically mad with rage so um so that's what i'm saying like the batarian that was in isolation like you go he goes through this whole process and it's fucking like it's terrible um I, <laughs> i've had that not too bad <laughs> so he uh so the um the captain's up the 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 first lieutenant or whatever what is his name let me see uh see and a starship let me see my suit and me da, 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 wrong side of the pod sleep team blue side. i'm trying to find his name here um so Volraxios, no, yeah, Senna, Senna. So Senna, uh, team leader Senna, that's what he was. He was a team leader of that specific team. And he woke up the captain to be like, hey, dude, some shit's going on. Or hey, lady, there's some shit's going on. Um, so let me turn on my other fan. So the, um, so Senna has in his possession a piece of contraband. Um, and that contraband is from, um, it's called, it's a VI, but it's a personality imprint of his grandmother. Now, um, VIs in Korean culture are banned because, especially any personality imprint VIs, because why? Because the GIF, because they created the GIF. It was just a basic program, but then it ended up kind of like, you know, becoming uh, itself. And then they asked them one day they asked, does this one have a soul? And that starts the whole GIF, you know, chaos um so because they've already created the geth they 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 basically clamped on, down on any kind of ai any kind of vi that's a personality like imprint or whatever and a personality imprint basically takes like every everything that you know that every like a mental print uh of that person um and it saved it to a disc and then you could ask it questions you could kind of interact with it like it's real but it's not necessarily sentience but at the same time there are moments where over time, because it learns from its interactions, that it can kind of take on these sentient like properties. So he has a VI and he talks to his grandmother who used to be this like legendary programmer or something like that. Um, and she, you know, she speaks in riddles and shit and she treats him like a kid and all this stuff. And it's a very robotic kind of interaction. Um, and he's trying, he's like, he's racking his brain at what the problem might be. And he knows that this imprint is of a programmer. So he thinks maybe this person can help the virus thing. That's out of his field, right? He, just, he can't, he can't deal with the virus thing right now, but there's something going on with the ship. And so she needs help figuring out what's going on with the ship. So... I agree. This is my favorite part of the story. This is my favorite. Yeah, no, it's it's so the 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 it's it's obviously bad to even have this thing. Like it's like really really bad just to have be in possession of this. Um, so he's hiding off in his hiding off in his room and just like talking to it, consulting uh, it, and just trying to get some kind of some kind of information, try to figure out what it is. Um, and so eventually, the grandmother figures out. That it is, uh, she, she, what she does is she kind of, she, she says, I think the next thing, based off of what I can figure out, I think the next thing that's going to happen is, like, you're going to lose comms. And sure enough, like, they end up losing comms temporarily. Um, she already, she already, like, uh, was able to discern, like, the, okay, the, or to figure out that, you know, there's going to be climate control issues. And there was, there was some climate control shifts, like, the fluctuations that were happening. Um, and then she guessed about the comms thing and that happened. So he was like, oh, shit, like, grandma really knows what the fuck she's fucking talking about. Um, so, eventually, 
we're skipping a lot of book here. <laughs> Eventually, the so they, they they go through and they start asking some of the people that are already awake, like you know who are affected by this thing. And and bear in mind, like the Drell and the Quarian that's walking around Senna, uh, the Drell has a, a suit on as well, an Viro suit, um, and so does the Batarian that, that's walking around with them, female Batarian. Um, so they're like like interviewing people, trying to figure out like what they know, what they know, whatever. And then the Drell, the Drell is very um, is 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 very and a very interesting character because the drill has kind of a shadowy background and uh, but very detective like um uh, uh, uh character features uh, what have i walked into i'm i'm, I'm spoiling i'm spoiling uh, mass effect annihilation the book just so you know because i want just i want to talk about it and i think it's such a great story and so it's story time with me um <laughs> a bridge mass effect you hadn't heard about mike b yeah exactly a bridge mass effect audiobooks um so they they uh she's going through like like uh, all the security footage and she discovers and the security footage is basically like you know here's a couple days was you know the the team whatever came out of uh, quarantine or came out of cryo to do you know their job at at, at year 130 in the trip and then 260 in the trip right um and you know there's like huge gaps where they just kind of fast forward because there's nothing happening but she spots uh, a shadow moving in between the cameras like like distinctly avoiding cameras and so so it caught her attention so she was like what the fuck is this and so she starts kind of investigating that she starts asking around like who would be up like what's going on um and so they uh they were able to basically piece together who the person was now meanwhile the Elcor is tasked with trying to come up with some way of creating a, like a retrovirus or an, an, uh, some kind of vaccine or something. And keep in mind, there's already hundreds of people. Um, <laughs> go back. <laughs> there's already hundreds of people that are infected by this thing. And again, like the, once they get to the later stages, like their brain is swelling up and they're raging and they're like fighting each other and shit. Uh, and it's just a fucking just chaos. Um and so, but meanwhile, most quarians are pretty much fine, right? Uh, so they, the oil core is like, dude, I don't have, I don't have the resources for this. Like, I can't just whip up a vaccine. I just, can't, I just I'm waiting for the skateboard part. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, I can't just come up with a vaccine. I need, I, I need like tools and all this stuff. And he said, well, there is one way. He's like, I could, I could, um, create like a retrovirus that we can put in somebody, um, and then their body would create the antibodies and then they would basically radiate because it's got to remember, it's got an R naught of like 27. So it would, you basically would just be breathing uh, and you would heal people around you. That's kind of the idea. And he's like, but the problem is you need to have, um, you, you need to find somebody who has gotten the virus and is immune to it. And I mean, again, we're all coronavirus experts. Now, you know how rare that is. So he's like, this is like, this is not like a needle in a haystack. This is like a needle in a galaxy. Um, and so they, uh, so the Elcor is just like, and also, oh, by the way, also we need Ezo, which we don't have any Ezo on board. There's only a couple places you have Ezo. You have Ezo in the engines, but if you take Ezo out of the engines, you're not going to make it to the Nexus. Uh, they don't have enough food to stay to stay awake until they get to the Nexus. So they, they can't like just like, you know, stay awake and just wait this out and whatever. They have to go back to the cryogen. So they're kind of limited on time. And also if the virus is running rampant, if the if the if the Quarian arc gets there, they're not gonna be boarded anyways. They're gonna be isolated until this thing runs its course or whatever happens. Um and so so it was like they're like, what can we you know, we're not going to find somebody that has it. So what they did was they lined everybody up and they took blood samples from everybody to see if they could find someone like the hail Mary. They could find one person that has the immunity to, uh, to this virus. He did discover, he, here's what he discovered. He discovered that the virus was like a mix of like all of these different viruses, like including viruses from like humanity. Right. Um, that were all like made like one mega virus. And he also discovered that it was like the perfect virus. And the reason why is because it had 
hundreds of years to mutate completely unmitigated. So it wasn't like, you know, like we get a virus now, like the coronavirus, it's like, oh, it's been like nine months and, you know, there's, you know, everybody's got it. But, you know, we've got like a handful of variations or whatever, but we're still talking about one year. And so in this case, we're talking about, you know, hundreds of years where this virus is basically completely unchecked and it became the perfect virus. It found a way to just basically mitigate all everything, uh, which is why it was jumping from species to species, something they just didn't think was possible. Um, they knew that there was something wrong with the cryopods, but they didn't really know what. And so they, uh, and so then at some point, the grandmother chimes into his ear and is like, hey, I figured something out. Um, and so she, she, she discovered that there was a virus in the computer system uh, that was intentionally like making changes and like doing stuff and then masking what, what it was doing. Um, that's, oh God. Uh, that's why when it, when you were asking the system, what, like what's, what's wrong with this pod or something, this pod, and it was kind of like, no, everything's fine. Right. So it was intentionally covering its tracks. Um, and so the solution for that was that, you know, the, the VI, the, 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 the his VI, uh, his grandmother's VI, um, they could put that into the system and she would basically clear it out herself. Uh, it's just taking one AI, putting it into the ship, and just letting it basically clean, clean up. Um, so he so he pulls in the um, he pulls in the uh, the captain. And the captain comes in. The captain is a very like very prestigious, very proud like person, very proud quarian. So he tells the captain, he's like, "Listen, I gotta tell you, like this is you're gonna fucking be mad, but this is the only way we're gonna get rid of this whatever problems with the ship." Um, and also, by the way, by injecting, you know, the, the, her, his grandmother's AI into the system, he ends up losing her in the process. It's a suicide mission because by the time his mother is like integrated into the system, she kind of disappears with the rest of the data core and everything. Uh, so it was a suicide mission for her. So he's like, he's like bummed out because, you know, this is his grandmother. He's got to basically give up what's left of his grandmother, whatever. So he, he brings in the captain. The captain was just like, shows the captain. The captain just stares at it and just says, this is like, this is an abomination. Like we have to destroy it. Like we can't, like, there's no way in hell we're going to do this. We have to destroy it. And he was like, what the fuck? And keep in mind, like, like the captain and Senna were like, like, I think they were like lovers or some shit. Like they've been together for a long time. They had a, they had a relationship, a special relationship there. Um, so he was like, what, why would you like, this is, this is the solution. You have like new galaxy, new rules. Like we need to solve this problem and this is the solution. But she was like, no, like we can't, we can't do it. Um, so he was like, so he said, fuck it. And just fucking launched her in there to, just to, to get her started on working on the, on the systems. Meanwhile, and all this shit's happening at the same time. Meanwhile, the drill finally puts together who the, um, who the person was that was up at night, like, or up, up in between the, uh, cryogen, you know, team, uh, sessions doing something. We don't know what, um, and at this, and also the Elcor, who's anal analyzing all these samples, discovers that it is, uh, he, he calls up Senna, he's like, and he's like, Senna and the captain, it's like, hey, so I've got some news, I found somebody, and he's like, who is it? He said, it's the captain, he said, it's you, to the captain. So now it's the cat, so it's the captain that is the catalyst, uh, or is the, um, the one patient who is immune to the virus, and who could be the incubator for you know, for the rest, uh, for the rest of the people. However, the captain is a quarian. So it's like, well, we can't, we can't like, we, we, we can't just have her breathe on everybody because then she's going to die. Um, and so they were like, well, we can't like, we can't, uh, 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 manufacture a retrovirus or a vaccine fast enough and man and manufacture enough of them to get to everybody before they die. So it's like, well, what the fuck we're going to do? Meanwhile, the drill and the Batarian, um, figured out who it was that was that was doing all this shit uh and and like sabotaging stuff it's the fucking captain it's the fucking captain so the captain like when confronted finally comes clean and and basically says that 
And she's been saying this the whole time that she did not appreciate that the council races are still in charge when you get to the system, when you get to Nexus. She's like, we left council space. Uh, and like in the council space, it's like the Asari, the uh, the the Salarians, the, uh, the Turians, and the humans who just basically made this space like a year ago. And they're like all on the council. And it's like, why have we been left out of this for so long? Like we need like a fresh start. So she's been saying that this whole time, but she it was worded in a way that you just think like, yeah, it sucks. But you know what? We got you know we got life. We got just got to do it. Um, and so, you know, she went to uh, uh, so she's confronted with this, and she said, you know, so like, yeah, you know, it it wasn't supposed to happen like this. Yes, I man, I I had somebody manufacture the computer virus. Yes, it is a it, it was a virus that we put they put it into the drells um cryo chambers cryogen chambers and it was supposed to put off a scent that made it smell like home and they they told us at the beginning of the book they told us this that the drill had a you know a um a scent that was installed in the cryogen chamber so that way it smells like home when they wake up and it was such a silly thing they're like it's such a silly thing um but reality was that was the that's how they got the uh virus into uh all these drill so it was only designed to affect the drill and then the idea was, and it was only a select, a select few of the drill that they put this in. Um, and it was the ones that they were, that were the most social. They basically, they watched them and it was the most social of, of, uh, of the drill, uh, because they wanted, they, what they wanted to do, they knew that it could, they knew that it could eventually jump, but they didn't know it was going to start replicating and do all this crazy shit beforehand and become the perfect virus. Um, it was the reason why it was made up of all these different races, um, or these are species uh, viral like RNA or whatever or DNA whatever was because it was manufactured to be that way so that it could affect all these different species and so the idea was that they show up to the nexus and then all the drill come out of the cryogen chambers chambers and then they they start interacting with everybody all the social drill the social butterflies making new friends all this stuff and then eventually they wipe out everybody in the nexus except for the quarian the hanar the elcor the batarians and that's it like that was that was her fucking plan and so what went wrong was that the um the the virus that they had written was uh it, it adjusted the cryogen chamber just a little bit too much and so it allowed the it allowed the virus to replicate and then of course mutate and become this super virus um and that's how they lost control of it and so that's uh so that was like their big their big fuck up there and so so senna was just like you know senna the other quarian was just like what the fuck so it's like so you, 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 we can't do like that. What they try to like reason with her. Like, no, you can't like, what the fuck are you even thinking? She's like, and she's like, we can't tell them. He said, we can't, when we get there, we can't tell them because if we tell them, if you tell them what happened here, then they will continue to oppress the Korean species because they'll say we're not trustworthy. And so he's like stuck. He's like, what the fuck? He's like, you could, sp she's like, you could space me or whatever you want to do. Like, but we can't tell them period. Um, and she had a point, like she had a point, she fucked up and she almost, she probably could have pushed them back hundreds of years because of this, just like the Geth. The reason why the Koreans are not a part of the council is because of the Geth. <laughs> so, um, so Senna is like, we're going to have a tribunal right now. Um, we're going to, we're going to have to judge you and sentence you right now because we need a solution right this second. And so they, uh, so unfortunately, um, Yorick, the Elcor, who's been busting his ass this whole fucking book to try to find a solution for this is in the final stages. Like he's getting to the final stage stages of, uh, of the virus. And, um, and so he's still conscious, but just fucking barely. Uh, and so they, they go into the, 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 the med room and they um and they have this tribunal and basically sentence her and her sentence her sentence if she accepted it her sentence was that she was going to get injected with the um with the retrovirus it was going to immediately start replicating through her body has the r not of 27 she's going to take off her uh her enviro suit and walk through the commons with all of the other races so that way they could all um they could all get the antibodies that way and so so she did uh and so she's basically walking without her suit um and uh she's immediately affected by this and everybody's touching her and everybody's trying to breathe the air around her and everybody's trying to basically exchanging 
just germs with with a quarian without an enviro suit um eventually she makes it all the way to the the volus uh uh area where they don't where they're, they're kind of environmentally sealed in right um and it's all ammonia in there and the whole time she's singing she's singing my suit and me and singing all this stuff just trying to like do all that it was her last like you know penance or whatever to try to make up for what she had done is to basically sag it so she dies in with the volus um and so uh and the volus you know they they you know try to like like sniff her up or whatever, try to absorb all these antibodies and everything like that. And that's, that is basically how the book ends. It's like, you know, the captain who set all this shit up is essentially, uh, has to sacrifice herself. She's, she's tried and she's sacrificed, she has to sacrifice herself in order to save everybody else. And then they all go back to sleep. <laughs> and so that's, so that's how the fucking book ends. And I'm just thinking like, uh, when the Aquarian ship arrives, like, I, I don't know how the DLC would have played out. But yeah, it's a real, like I said, it's a re I left out a lot of shit. I left out a lot of shit. It is a really, really good, good fucking story. Um, we got to crush the captain to dust and snort her. <laughs> yeah. So I, after the story ended, like, so I had this visual, this visual of this Corian without a suit, just basically walking like, oh, maybe like arms outstretched from like all of these different species, different races of aliens, like on either side, just like trying to get like to get the antibodies off of the you know, perspiration on her body or something. And so I just imagine them like touching her and like doing all this a while. And you don't see her face because we don't know what Corians look like, right? But you don't see her face. So she's walking away and I can, I can imagine this corridor and it's dark because the low power. And so like all these speeches are grabbing her while she's walking through. And it's just like this image is just burned in my fucking brain because it's so, for a Corian, this is so powerful to be without a fucking suit. Um, and so, yeah, she's singing all the way down into all through all the chambers, through all the environment areas and everything. And then eventually she dies in the uh, in the uh, Volus area. And that's it. So, woo. So it's a good fucking book. Sorry to ruin it for you. But, man, I had to talk about it. I had to talk about it. So good. Um. So, yeah, that's uh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Or some Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Mass Effect. <laughs> Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Mass Effect Andromeda Annihilation. Super, super good book. I still would say, I would still would say, uh, go and uh, check it out if you've got time because like I said, there's a lot of detail there. It's a fucking mystery. Like it's, it's a total, like, you know, the whole thing is a fucking murder mystery. Um, but there's like the, 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 um, virus, a computer virus or systems virus. And there's the real, the, the, the biological virus pathogen, whatever. And there's just all this stuff that's, and it's, it's like, it's such at the beginning, it's such a mystery is what the fuck it is. And then once they discover it, it becomes such chaos trying to contain it and do all this stuff. It's crazy. So, so yep, yeah. it was a, yes, right. It was a mystery. I ruined it. <laughs> a plus book though, man, a fucking plus, a fucking plus. Uh, you know what? If, if, uh, if we don't get any more Andromeda stories and they just want to like put the rest out using, you know, just with books and shit, I will totally be down with that because it's this, this new writer they have, what's her name? Um, let me see. Mass Annihilation. Let me, let me go see what her name was. Uh, but she's, she's really good. Let's see, uh, author. Catherine M. Valente. Catherine M. Valente. Yeah. She's a good one. She's really good. So I see. Um, so the VA is uh, A plus plus two. See, I will say I generally like the Emmy books. Yeah, I had to move it from Audible to listen to. Uh, let's do this. Arthur Fist. I would love if they gave some closure with books. Did so you spoil it? Any other books you recommend? Yeah. Uh. Yeah. The. If well, first off, if you're a Mass Effect fan, like period like first trilogy fan um you have to go and read let me get the list of books here because they all have like the same fucking name mass effect books <laughs> uh, let me see revelation so mass effect Re so there there's the only book i've not read in the first trilogy is deception um so mass effect revelation is uh is done by drew uh Car carpician uh, I might be saying that incorrect. Uh, I think it's Carp Carpician. Um, he is the main writer of the original Mass Effect um, handful of books or uh, books and uh, games. Um, so Revelation follows uh, Anderson, Captain Anderson or Commander Anderson, 
uh, and Saren, and you get a good insight into what, why there's beef between Anderson and Saren. Because when you first arrive as Shepard, like, Anderson is already just like, you know, fuck, you know, fuck Saren. And Saren is like, fuck all humans, but especially Anderson. <laughs> So yeah, it, it's it's a great it's a great story if you, to get some really good insight into who Saren was prior, and also helps you understand his motivations a little bit too. He has um, like there's a reason why he hates humans, uh, and this is part of the prologue too. So I could spoil this, but there's the first contact war when humans first encounter a Mass Effect relay, and they encounter Turians, and they just basically open fire and they start fighting and shit. So in that war. Um, well, this is, this is part of the prologue. It's like the first, like, three pages. Um, well, anyway, so in that war, a lot of Turians are lost. So, I'll leave it at that. Saren is obviously upset and holding a grudge. Um, but that's a good one. Definitely read that one. Uh, Ascension is another good one. Ascension follows a, um, you know, you guys know Jack from the, from the game, but Ascension follows, uh, no spoilers here. Um, it's, it's about the elusive man and this biotic girl that they are so the story with jack uh is that jack is patient zero she's referred to as patient zero right and the reason why is because jack was part of the cerberus project where they would have a bunch of kids and they would try all these biotic implants and upgrades to some kids and this is a game spoiler hopefully you play the game um and then they but but if so if it didn't kill the kid then they would take it and put it in a jack and they kept doing this and so but obviously tragedy strikes and they kill a bunch of kids They're like well i guess we can't give that to jack so whatever so they're trying to create the perfect biotic that's how jack came to be um jack ends up breaking out and taking off and all this stuff so jack is um this this follows the alliance has a biotic um uh camp or whatever their you know, research facility where they have a bunch of kids but they're doing it in a more like they're trying to nurture kind of like hogwarts but for biotic users same fucking thing um and so it follows this little girl who has like these she's she's autistic and she but she also has like these um kind of enhanced biotic abilities but she doesn't really know how to like use them or anything right um but it but what you discover and this is part of the this is part of the back of the cover here um that she is a she is a plant un, unknowingly right she's just a little girl right she's a plant from Cerberus the elusive man this is how elusive man got insights into do in, into his own projects he was basically monitoring what and doing his own tests um, by monitoring what this little girl was going through and also what was going on in the in this facility and so <clears throat> it's a really good story and it ties in with the with the quarians pretty heavily. Um, so if you want to learn a lot about Quarians, and Quarians are a very interesting race. If you want to learn a lot about Quarians, like this is where like you could get a super good insight into their culture, uh, a really good insight in just the way that they handle outsiders and everything. Um, so <clears throat> or how they interact with other species. So yeah, Ascension's another good one. So Revelation, Ascension, definite must reads. Uh I have to reread Retribution. Retribution is Retribution is tied into Ascension. Um, as a matter of fact, there are characters that kind of overlap some of these stories. So you kind of have to, you kind of want to read them in order. Um, so I would say, yeah, revelation first, um, and then you play the game, play mass effect one, uh, ascension takes place after mass effect one. I think like almost immediately after mass effect one, cause they talk about Saren and they talk about, uh, about sovereign. <clears throat> they talk about how they don't really understand what sovereign is yet. Right. So it was like a reaper. It's like, Oh, what the fuck's a reaper? Um, and the retribution, uh, I think Retribution happens, I don't know where it happens in the timeline with other Mass Effect games, but it doesn't really tie in necessarily with the games at all. Um, but it does follow a, a guy who, I can't say who he is, but um, uh, he, but basically the elusive man is trying to create like the super soldier or something like that. So it kind of follows that guy's, you know, uh, saga. Um, and then Deception follows the, <clears throat> it follows a character from one of the other books as she becomes more, uh, more apt, well, Jean Gerson, not Jean Gerson, um, uh, they're all, there's Grayson, Garson, and Gerson. Like, I don't know what the obsession is with G names. It drives me fucking nuts. But anyways, it follows, uh, the main character, the, the little girl from, um, 
from Mass Effect Ascension and how her growth is. But I heard that book sucks, so I don't know if I can recommend it. Um, and then, yeah. And then uh, that that's that's your set of books if you want to read that for Mass Effect Trilogy. And I would recommend doing it because, the, you know, the trilogy is coming back out. So, I mean, I already read through Revelation and Ascension again. I'm going to I'm gonna start Retribution soon. I guess I'm going to go ahead and do Deception just to kind of see if it's any good or just you kind of get more story there. Um, but, you know, just having a better understanding of the universe really helps when you... Um, when you're like you're know, talking with in-game NPCs and they're like saying something random about some other, you know, some other species or whatever, and like you're like, okay, yeah, I have a good understanding of how that species culturally interacts with folks, so it's not a surprise that like you know, Batarians are dicks, or or that you know, Volus are the way they are for whatever, or why they were in virus suits and all that stuff. So, so yep. So there you go. <laughs> so uh, so that's it. That's it. No more no more spoilers. Those are my recommendations for books. Go and watch them. Or read them, whatever. <laughs> Maybe we'll get lucky. We'll get a book. We'll get a movie out of some of these because, man, some of them are so good. Is having the collector's helmet uh, help you understand the story better too? Yes, you have to wear it while you are reading, just so you know. All right. Stares at book intently. Read it. Read it. All right, I'm going to leave. Some of the best shit. Surprised it wasn't a movie. I know, right? It's so good. Although, although, you know, uh, Annihilation would actually make a really good movie right now. Like, this is, like, if you want, I mean, you need a virus movie, man, right? Like, this is a, this is a perfect movie. Everybody is pretty well versed in how viruses work right now. Like, that would be a perfect one. Uh, the, yeah, the movie would be crap. Oh, dang it, Kev. Yeah, you're right, probably. All right, guys, I'm going to leave. I got to go downstairs. Thank you for letting me talk your fucking ears off uh, about all this stuff. Um, I'll go. I'll go and highlight this and separate it and everything. We'll put it somewhere. But uh, for say, people who want spoilers, you know. Uh, but yeah. So you guys have yourself a good rest of your day. I'm gonna see you guys tomorrow. I'll find something else to play. We'll see. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go get some. Uh, we're gonna salad. Salad night. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Oh, it just stopped.